Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you all again to a new session of Catechism for Class 7. Let's start our session with a small prayer. I request all of you to join your hands, close your eyes and be in a prayerful position. Heavenly Father, we come before you for a new session of Catechism learning. Lord, Help us to understand you in a better way. Allow us to know how we can be good Christians and set an example to others. May your Holy Spirit be our guide and companion throughout our life. O Mother Mary, pray and intercede for each of us. Amen. So how are you all doing? I hope you all are doing fine. In our last session, I was telling you about desire not the undeserving. Yes, we do have this habit of desiring a lot of things. But we need to understand whether we really need those things. So, to control ourselves is itself is a grace of God. And we all should have that. Being Christians, we should practice the virtue of controlling the desire. So I told you about few stories. Out of which I remember I told you the story of Naboth. Naboth's story is there in your catechism text itself. And we know how King Ahab and his wife uh, plotted a murder for Naboth just because they wanted to conquer the possession of Naboth. I also told you about the difference between greed and passion. You all being students should understand what is greed and what is passion. This is the right age where you can pursue different sorts of passion. But don't ever get involved into the practice of greed that will only bring losses in your life. So, so snatching away anything that belongs to somebody else by force is definitely a practice of greed. You are greedy about that thing. That is the reason why you want that thing so badly. So basically I told you that if you will look around people are greedy about main th three things that is wealth, possession and power. I told you being children you must be greedy about these things in a less magnified way. But when you grow into adults you should be role model for others being Christians you should not get involved into the practice of greed. Then we also had a discussion about Virtues to help us to conquer greed. How we can conquer greed? So there were simple virtues which I discussed with all of you. The first one was spirit of poverty. Where you live as a poor because somewhere you understand that whatever is needed that is only to be done. That is only what you need in real that should be just you know used instead of getting involved in a luxurious practice. So practicing spirit of poverty will always give you graces of God. The next virtue was thrift. Thrift as the word suggests you have something in possession but you do understand that there are others who are in need of it. So once you fulfill your need you give away the remaining things to those who are not privileged like you. The next virtue was generosity. I also gave you an activity 
that during the Christmas season, you all can practice one simple act of, gener of generosity where you can be generous to somebody who is in dire need of something. So generosity is a virtue which can be practiced to conquer greed. The next virtue is satisfaction. So if you are satisfied with the kind of dress you have or if you are satisfied with the kind of notebook you have, then you will not look for something else or you will not peep into your friend's bag, right? So being satisfied with what you have is very important to conquer greed. The next virtue is protection of nature. Yes, anything that exists in public is your responsibility. You just cannot go and damage that possession. It's a public possession and you should respect the other people who are also going to use that possession. Today, I am going to talk about another topic. So the topic is very simple. This is chapter number 12, which says the greatest commandment. So you had been hearing about different commandments in this entire catechism book. So we were talking about all the 10 commandments one by one, one by one. And now we have reached at a position where we are going to talk about the greatest commandment. So before I start with the chapter, I have a simple question for all of you, every Sunday when you go for Holy Mass, do you ever notice that the priest says a line, do this in memory of me? Yes, Jesus himself said this line while he was having the meal, the last supper with his, with his disciples. Do this in memory of me. This line simply denotes the symbol of love. When Jesus broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, they were sharing a meal of love. It is a symbol of love. So every Sunday when we participate in Holy Mass, we are being a member of that love which Jesus is kind of giving to everybody. So we all are being part of that meal and we all are experiencing the love of Christ. So the very basic uh, foundation for the greatest commandment is love. We should understand this that love is very important. When I say love, love doesn't just have one angle as you all must be wondering like, you know, the boy and the girl. No, love has various angles. The love of Christ is a very different love. The love that your mother have for you is a different love. A father's love is a, dif is a different love. Love between siblings, between friends, between a teacher and a student, between grandparents, all these are different sorts of love. And all of them have different meaning and different angles. So it is very important that we understand the different angles of love. So with various people, we have various forms of love. And when I say love, there are various expressions as well to express the love towards them. For example, you all love your grandparents, right? So how do you express your love towards your grandparents? By hugging them, by kissing them, right? So it's a different sort of a love. You all must be having your favorite teachers, isn't it? So how do you express your love towards your teacher? By going and giving cards, maybe small gifts. So this is how you express your love towards your teacher. So the expression of love is different for different people. So, whenever you are in love with somebody, it can be your parents, it can be your siblings, it can be your friends, you always take care of that person, isn't it? You always protect the person and you are constantly alert 
and you want to know what is happening in the life of that person. You feel belonged to that person. That is the bond of love. Why am I giving you all this introduction? Because I want to introduce you to the love of Christ. Jesus says that we as Christians are supposed to follow the love of Christ and also to show this love to, the, to other people in this world. So according to Jesus, we are not supposed to treat anybody differently. We are supposed to love the person unconditionally. We are supposed to care for that person. We are supposed to protect the person. We are supposed to constantly be alert about what is happening in the life of that person and how we can contribute in making that person a better human. That is what Christ's love is all about. And we as Christians bear the responsibility that we do share this love with everybody. Just the way Christ shared his love every Sunday or in, during every Holy Mass when he shared the meal with all of us. So we need to understand that love is a substance and love for God is can be expressed through little, little things. Here I would like to tell you a small story. So there was a man who barely believed in the existence of God. But later on what happens is, he kind of gets involved in such a sickness where he cannot step out of his bed. He's constantly on his bed. So one of the priests visit him and tell him that, you don't need to feel lonely about anything. I am going to keep a chair next to you. Imagine that Jesus is sitting there and you can talk whatever worries, whatever is your problem, you can talk to Jesus. So this man somewhere started believing that Jesus is sitting on that chair and every day he made sure that the chair is decorated with various beautiful cushions, towels and he used to ask his wife to do that part. Later on this man died and when he died his wife and his children when they entered the room they saw that this man was lying he was he kept his head towards the chair and he was he, he died in that way. So somewhere this man believed that the chair had the presence of God. This simple is the love for God through our simple night prayers maybe or simple morning prayers maybe we all can love God through a simple and a very little pure acts that we can do for God love for brethren yes in and around us we all have our people we need to respect them we need to love them unconditionally they should feel and the expression of our love should be strong enough that they understand that we do care about them. So on this note, I would like to wind up with our today's session. Have a blessed day.